According to a poll, this area is the most desirable and up-and-coming place in Bangkok for expats to live in. So I'm going to spend a few days around here. I want to see just exactly what it is about this place that's getting everyone excited. Welcome to Udom Suk. To get a really good idea of what any area is like and whether it's going to be desirable for you to live in, you've got to take a good look around, pound the pavement at street level, see what's going on. And after the last couple of days of reconnaissance that I've been doing, I'm not impressed at all. I wouldn't live here in a million years, but I'm willing to give it a chance for the video. I mean, George Orwell once said, one man's ghetto is another man's paradise, and I'm not going to argue with a man. By the way, that wasn't the George Orwell, that was George Orwell from Newcastle, who I spoke to. Idea Moby, one of many good looking condos in this area. In fact, if there is one thing this area has going for it, it is very reasonable rental costs. And a lot of the places are within walking distance of the SkyTrain. So I thought I'd show you a selection of these and give you a guide to how much they would cost the rent per month. So hopefully this will blow the wind up your skirt and have you begging for more. Well, if you do decide to make Udom Suk your new home, then HomePro is just around the corner if you're looking for carpets, curtains, bedding, furniture, kitchen appliances, and cheap bleach. But do beware, if you're moving into one of the cheaper places, you're not gonna fit much into 24 square meters. Transport links are pretty good around here. You've got the SkyTrain station at Udom Suk, of course, but for all you thriftier, expats that are saving your money for Bitcoin, then you've got 15 different buses going up Sukhumvit Road. I know a lot of foreigners wouldn't be seen dead using the bus. Years ago when I used to take the bus, I'd see foreigners hiding behind newspapers and stuff. In fact, there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of using the buses in Bangkok. Often, it's the best way to beat the traffic. Well, that is not for leaning on, that's for sure. If you fall in that water, God knows what will happen if you get a mouthful of that. Anyway, when I explore areas, as you know, I get really excited when I see a canal. Now, I don't mean like overexcited, vinegar strokes, that kind of thing, and they just seem to do something for me. Because Bangkok is, after all, the Venice of the East, but it seems Udom Suk didn't get the message because this is the only one canal that I can find in the whole area. And as you can see, it's in a pretty sad state. This is the Klong Bang Ore, and I followed it around the corner. It goes through a processing plant, but on the other side of that processing plant, it looks actually quite toxic, a bit more than here. And it looks like a lot of people have been doing a lot of washing up today. A lot of street markets in Udom Suk selling everything you could ever desire beyond your wildest dreams. And if you've been in Thailand for any length of time, you've probably got a good idea of what that means.
If you're a fan of street food, Udomsuk Road will definitely whet your appetite. There are stalls down the stores, on the pavements, in the streets, and they sell everything you can imagine for that culinary experience. Now, I've seen a place on the map called Udomsuk Walk, and I'm not sure of the exact distance, but as the name suggests, I'm gonna walk it, see how far it is. And according to the reviews, it's a great place to eat, drink, and hang out once the sun goes down. So, let's pound the pavement and see what we can find along the way. Well, not great weather for walking, is it? I'll wait around for an hour or so, see if it calms down. If not, there's always tomorrow. Brian, you've lived in Udum for about three years, right? Yep. Yeah. What's so great about this area? I really like it here because it's outside of the main hustle and bustle of Bangkok, but still with everything that you need. You know, we've got the markets here, you've got all the shops that you need, you can literally order food that's really close, you know, all your normal stuff, your McDonald's, we've got a Domino's, Pizza Hut's whole kind of shebang. We've got a, a macro just across the road. Um, we've got a Tesco in the, in the uh, petrol station across there, but literally two minute walk is, is the market. So you can pretty much get everything there. They are actually opening up a, a massive shopping center as well, um, a little bit further down near uh, Bang Na BTS. What I really like most about Udom Suk is I've been trying to learn the Thai language and the best thing that I find here not that I've got a problem with tourists or, or living with, with other foreigners, but it's basically here I have to speak Thai and, and every day when I go into shops, I find myself having to kind of, you know, be involved in the, in the culture and, and the language a little bit more. Around this area, it's, it's really kind of quite local, you know. I've been for a few drinks. Um, you've got Udom Sik Walk just down the road and there's a few bars that are scattered around there. But generally, I find that the kind of vibe is very Thai down there. You're also welcome in there, you know. I've never had anyone say that you, you can't drink here because you're a foreigner or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there an expat scene in this area? I wouldn't say I've really been involved in, a, in the kind of expat scene out here, but I have started to see more and more expats sort of move into the area. So I can understand that, you know, when people say it's an up and coming area, yeah, there's definitely more, more, more foreigners living here now than there was before. Last question, Ryan, and you've got to answer this honestly. Yep. Have you been to the cat cafe? I haven't, no. I don't even like cats. Oh. <laughs> All right, mate, I'll, I'll let you off on that. Oh yeah, you love cats, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, nice one, mate. Nice one, mate. Thank you. See you later. Cheers, bro. I'm not sure if I'm the first on YouTube to stand in amongst all the noise here at Bang Nara Intersection, but I hope I am anyway. I never thought when I started the channel I'd ever get to stand in the middle of Bangnar intersection doing a video. Anyway, the reason why I'm here is because I wanted to point out a feat of engineering. The SkyTrain passing under the expressway was done with just a few feet to spare clearance above the train roof. And I met the architect of the SkyTrain and he told me it was a real headache because otherwise they would have had to build a viaduct as high as they've ever done on the SkyTrain to go over the expressway. And that would have cost about 10 times as much money. They've always had plans to extend the SkyTrain in two different directions here at Bang Nara intersection. One way going to Suwanapum Airport and the other way heading to Klong Toy Port. But as you're well aware, it hasn't actually happened. When they built this extension from On Nut, they actually installed the two junctions in readiness for construction. And apart from a bit of bidding for the contracts on the Suwanapum branch, we haven't heard anything ever since. If I had to raise any red flags for this area, one would be the traffic noise. It is absolutely relentless around here, just like on Nut. And the other one would be that this part of Sukhumit Road is actually raised up about a meter off the ground from all the shops. 
and that gives me the impression that it's very prone to flooding, just like we saw a couple of days ago. There's a lot of vacant land around the SkyTrain station on both sides of Sukhumit Road, which can only mean one thing, that a lot of development will be taking place around here in the next five years or so, condos most likely. But there is one rather large plot of land in Udom Soi 2 where the residents have only a matter of months to move out before their neighbourhood gets completely razed to the ground. So that's the construction project for Cloud 11, and I'm not quite sure what Cloud 11 is going to be. It sounds like the space station they were talking about a few months ago. Now, that might raise a few eyebrows amongst you, a space station here in Thailand. Is that possible? Can the brakes fail on a rocket? Not quite sure, so I understand your concern. Anyway, it's more likely to be a retail condo shopping complex, which would be very useful around here, especially if you want to get your fix of MK or Barbecue Plaza. Perfect. So there is a shopping mall around here. It's a bit of a walk from Udom Suk Sky Train, but it will definitely please the window shoppers like me and a few window lickers, I'm sure. Anyway, the True Digital Park, I haven't had a walk around, but I'm pretty sure it's got all the same shops as most other shopping malls. The reason why I stopped here is because I've seen this street from the SkyTrain and all that classic 1970s Bangkok concrete architecture really does something for me and here it's left intact on both sides of the road. Anyway, Sukhumvit 101 slash 2, what else is down here? Not a lot to be honest, but I spotted a couple of co-working spaces that might appeal to the digital nomads. Plus there's a vlogger's paradise, it's called STM Digital, microphones, tripods, cameras, it's got all that. And I spotted another type of co-working space, but in this case, you'd be co-working with Jesus Christ himself. As we know, I always say everyone loves a good ghost story, but I'm not so sure about this one, because when it comes to the supernatural activity, details are always sketchy and unreliable. Anyway, I'll get straight into the story. Apparently someone stole the spirit house from this plot of land about 30 years ago and it was never the same since. And there were sightings of a woman at the window, footsteps heard in the empty building. It hasn't been used for a, quite a long time. And the guy who told me the story said it could have been made up by a homeless guy who used to live there for a long time because he didn't want anyone else to sleep there. And that sounds quite feasible, doesn't it? So you never know, do you? But as I always say, everyone loves a good ghost story. Well, that just about wraps things up here in a very noisy Udom Suk. Hopefully this video has persuaded you, or maybe not, that this is the area for you. If it has, then I hope you have a pleasant stay. Anyway, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like, share and comment. If you want to support the channel, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen or in the description. And there's a PayPal link there as well. Anyway, that just leaves me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.